Today we have this really nice, aesthetically pleasing in a pro. The solution development is elegant and the result is pretty satisfying as well. So for reference purposes, we're going to call the integral hair i. And what I'd like to do first is deal with this term in the denominator of the integrand. So let me write this as the integral from 0 to infinity of x squared divided by, I want to factor out an e to the x term from here. So I can write this as e to the 2x because of the square times 1 plus e to the negative x squared dx. Okay, cool. And you can write this in a cleaner manner as well as the integral from 0 to infinity of x squared times e to the negative 2x dx divided by 1 plus e to the negative x squared. Now we have a structure that's pretty conducive to a geometric series expansion. So let's recall the geometric series. We know that the reciprocal of 1 plus x can be expanded as the sum over the non-negative integers k of negative 1 to the k times x to the k, provided that the absolute value of x is less than 1. And that is true for e to the negative x on our interval of integration. That means we can expand 1 by 1 plus e to the negative x as the sum over k of negative 1 to the k times e to the negative kx. And I know what you're thinking. We need a series expansion that involves 1 plus e to the negative x squared in the denominator. So how can we achieve that? Well, that's pretty simple. All you have to do is take the infinite series we've just inferred and differentiate this with respect to x. Okay, cool. So this implies on the left-hand side, you have, because of the power rule, a negative sign. So 1 plus e to the negative x. And there's now an exponent of negative 2, so that's a square in the denominator. And because of the chain rule, you have the repeated function times the derivative of negative x, which is negative 1, and the two negative signs cancel out quite nicely. And on the right-hand side, you have the sum over k of negative 1 to the k times negative k times e to the negative kx. And you can, you can absorb the negative 1 attached to the k variable here into the negative 1 to the k by writing this as negative 1 to the k plus 1. Okay, cool. And notice first up for the k equal to 0 case, you just get a big fat 0, meaning that we can start the sum at 1 instead. So this implies that e to the negative x divided by 1 plus e to the negative x squared can be expanded as the sum over k, uh, the sum over the positive integers k of negative 1 to the k plus 1 times k times e to the negative kx. Now that we have this really awesome series expansion, we can use it to evaluate the integral. So first up, we have to expand this e to the negative 2x term as e to the negative x times e to the negative x, and we have the required structure for applying the series expansion. So we have the integral now from 0 to infinity of x squared times e to the negative x times the sum over the positive integers k of negative 1 to the k plus 1 times k times e to the negative kx dx. And these terms outside the summation operator are independent of the index variable k, so we can just slip them into the sum here and write this as the integral from 0 to infinity of the sum over k of negative 1 to the k plus 1 times k times x squared times e to the negative k plus 1 times x on multiplying the two exponential terms. Integration with respect to x, of course. And switching up the order of the integration and the summation operators gives us the sum over k of the integrals from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the k plus 1 times k, which is independent of the x variable with respect to which we're integrating. So we can just pop them outside the integration operator. We have negative 1 to the k plus 1 times k, and we have the integral of x squared times e to the negative k plus 1x. And the integration here is pretty easy to carry out. All you need is a substitution involving this uh, argument of the exponential function, that is k plus 1 times x. We let it equal to some other variable, call it u. And this implies that i equals the sum over k, 
of negative 1 to the k plus 1 times k times the integral still from 0 to infinity as the limits are clearly not bothered by our transformation and x squared turns into u squared divided by k plus 1 squared we have e to the negative u and the differential element transforms into du divided by k plus 1 and again we have terms independent of the variable of integration that we can just pop outside the integration operator and we can write this on multiplying out the terms of course as the reciprocal of k plus 1 cubed and we have this integral that I'm just going to write in a more clean manner from 0 to infinity of u squared times e to the negative u du which we recognize as the gamma function our old pal the gamma function evaluated at 3 which is 2 factorial, which of course is 2. So this implies that i equals twice the sum over the positive integers k of negative 1 to the k plus 1 times k divided by k plus 1 cubed. And all that's left to do is evaluate this infinite series. And that's actually a pretty simple task because all you need is a transformation where you let k plus 1 equal to n. And this implies that i can be written as twice the sum over n starting at 2 of negative 1 to the n times n minus 1 divided by n cubed. And using the linearity of the summation operator, we can write this as twice the sum over n of negative 1 to the n times n divided by n cubed, which of course simplifies out to the reciprocal of n squared, minus twice the sum over n of negative 1 to the n divided by n cubed. So we have a couple of familiar faces from the realm of infinite series expansions. And they're even more familiar once I pop in a couple of negative signs. So I can write the alternating terms as negative 1 to the n plus 1. So that means all I have here is a couple of instances of the Dirichlet eta function. Now the eta function is defined as the sum over the positive integers n of negative 1 to the n plus 1 divided by n to the s, where the real part of s is positive. Okay, cool. That means we have i equal to negative 2 times a to 2 plus 2 times a to 3, but there's something missing from these eta functions because our sums are being evaluated at the positive integers over the positive integers starting at 2. So we're missing the cases for n equal to 1. And for n equals 1, all you have is negative 1 to the 1 plus 1 divided by 1 squared and 1 cubed, which in both cases just evaluates out to 1. Okay, cool. So that means I'm going to have to subtract 1 from these eta functions and we have negative 2 times negative 1 which is positive 2 and plus 2 times negative 1 which is negative 2 and they just cancel out and again we're left with twice the eta function at 2 plus twice or rather negative 2 times eta 2 plus twice the eta function at 3 and eta 2 is just pi squared by 12 so we have some nice cancellation here and eta 3 here we can employ the wonderful functional relationship between the zeta function and the eta function, where eta 3 would be equal to 1 minus 2 to the 1 minus 3 times zeta 3, which is Apery's constant. So we have negative pi squared by 6 plus 2 times 3 fourths, which will be... 3 halves times zeta 3, and we can just factor out a 1 by 2 here and finally conclude that the integral from 0 to infinity of x squared divided by 1 plus e to the x squared dx equals 1 half of 3 times zeta 3, Apri's constant, minus pi squared by 3, which is a pretty cool looking result indeed. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.